one of the things we do like to do on this program is just talk to Jamaicans who are doing all kinds of interesting things, you know. And I've been following the career of Dr. Hume Johnson, who started in broadcasting. You know, she worked with us here in Jamaica in the group, um, Red News on Radio, did her PhD, went into academia. And that is actually what really interests me because a lot of people do go into academia and they are academics, you know, and they write important papers and they do all kinds of research. But the, the issue of establishing a business, becoming an entrepreneur is not necessarily something you see a lot of academics do. And we saw Hume, you know, launch out with her um, coaching, executive coaching, workshop series, uh, establish a space in the personal branding arena. She's written so far, correct me if I'm wrong, Hume, I know you have at least two books on branding. Um, what was one of the leaders in a branding conference that took place here in Jamaica a couple of years ago, looking at Brand Jamaica. And she mm -hmm. has now announced an online masterclass. Let's listen into a clip from this Instagram video when she announced that. For over 20 years, I've had a pretty disparate career in journalism as a TV presenter, producer, radio news reader, in politics as a consultant, political speech writer, in entertainment as a brand consultant and publicist. In other words, I was all over the place. A Jane of all trades, so to speak, doing everything communication. And what a massive mistake that was. The result was that my career outlook was unfocused and quite frankly, a mess. I knew I needed to gain clarity about what was the common thread in my career. Indeed, to work with smart, high-performing leaders, I also needed them to know with certainty what value I could offer. I can tell you, credentials and qualifications won't help you to get clarity. I had a doctorate, a master's, a bachelor's, and I still felt like a fish out of sea, going wherever the tide took me. I had to begin to work on my own personal brand, lean into my value and leverage it to get where I wanted to be. Hume Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. Executive leader, leadership coach and professor of communication. Great to talk to you. Great to talk to you, Dion. Thank you so much. I was listening to that clip and I, said, I was saying, boy, yeah, man, holy heap of things. And then I heard you say that was such a massive mistake. And I was like, what? Because <laughs> people don't say, people don't say you're going with things, man. You're going with things. Why are you, you know, saying you know, that was a mistake? It's, it's not that my experiences and all of those was a mistake. What, what was a mistake is not finding that common thread. You know, when you're in Jamaica, we, you know this, uh, you really become a hustler sometimes, you know, because I worked for two years full time. I was a TV host at Jamaica Magazine. I was a host over there at um, GIS TV, and then I came over to RGR as a newsreader, but it was part time on Fame FM. Thank, thanks, Francois, for, for hiring me at the time. After that, you kind of, I had autonomy because that's what I wanted an agency, but. You do have to find employment. You have to find gigs. You have bills to pay. And so I used my skills at the time. I was a publicist for Tony Rebel for a number of years. I was working with a couple of the young senators in the People's National Party, writing their speeches, building their brands. And so I felt like I was all over the place. So by the time I decided to do a PhD, it was a suggestion from someone else. It wasn't a... Uh, uh, an organic uh, movement uh, throughout my career. It wasn't an intentional decision. It was a suggestion. But I thought, okay, I'll, I'll do that. So I felt I was drifting along. And so after my PhD, I felt a bit confused uh, that I'd lost my anchor because my brand was my jobs. My, I was a journalist, and then I was a political speechwriter. I was a publicist. All of those things were my brand. And so when I was a student and now leaving New Zealand with a PhD in hand, this is supposed to be your big weapon, the uh, highest degree you can get. Now you're supposed to be taking on the world. And that was a moment where I felt extreme anxiety because I didn't have a career focus. I right. hold, hold, hold that thought. Minutes. 
Hold that thought for me. Didn't have a career focus and clearly you found it. But how? Let's go to the break. Do a little bit of business. We come back with Dr. Hume Johnson. Remember our WhatsApp line. It's 5535908. Soon come. Thank you so much for staying with us. We're talking to Dr. Hume Johnson, executive leadership coach and professor of communication about her journey. And she was at the point where she was telling us she finished her PhD. And then it's like, what now? So what happened? Well, the best advice I got at the time was to find an arena where I could become an expert in my niche. And that, to me, was the light bulb moment for me. And, I, and that's why I chose academia, because this was a space where I could use the skills and talents that I had and develop more. And I also could exude my passion for coaching, for leadership, for leadership development, because of all those leaders I was working with in Jamaica in the political arena. I simply shifted arenas to work with executives who were working in corporate spaces. But the same uh, mode was the same uh, development of their profile, of their imaging, of their value. But, the but stick, up, stick up in, stick up in, yeah. stick up in, because you said going into academia. So I get that. But then you said, because that's where you could do coaching and leadership development and so on. And as I was saying in the introduction, a lot of people go into academia and that's it. Then no, no, oh, not no. go on from the side, <laughs> but you actively no, built no, out this business. It. I don't know if you, I don't know if you have the right notion of academia. No. Academia is meant to develop society. We are meant to be studying society, finding the gaps, and contributing to uh, knowledge. So I don't know about other academics. I don't want to be part of an ivory tower where we're just sitting there talking to each other. I believe that what we're meant to do is to develop the future. And I believe that where I sat, using my skills in communication and in journalism, I discovered that what we needed was not just knowledge, but to teach entry-level leaders. These are the next generation of leaders, who they are what skills that they should have, what values they should go out with, and what kind of competencies and what value are they going to deliver when they leave. So when I leave those bunch of people there, then I move into the space of executives who have already left institutions, who have not benefited from this notion of personal branding and that is why i found such a comfortable spot in leadership development because in front of me are judges attorneys physicians uh architects these are successful some of them highly paid highly qualified people who are saying what is my value but was that After difficult many, many years was that difficult in terms of building out the business because you know business development and entrepreneurship is not for the faint of hearts not at all. Not at all. As so I was that hard for you? Especially since you you weren't now home where you already had your base and people know you and whatever because you, you had moved to the United States. It took me 12 years to register my business. I what? didn't register it officially until maybe 2018. I didn't because the, the, the Yannick Page, you, everybody knows Yannick Page, yes. said to me one day, you can't be a part-time entrepreneur. And she was right, because I said to her, I'm not an entrepreneur, I'm an academic. So when I was dabbling in business, I didn't realize how much effort it took until now, when I am fully invested and engaged in it. And I still show up to work, and I realize that what we're teaching in the classroom should be skills. After four years of college or three years, what is your skill? What competencies are you going to lend to an employer? And many of my students graduating, the vast majority cannot answer that question. When I sit in rooms with executives who are highly qualified, who are much higher positioned than I am, and I say, what is the biggest asset you bring to the table in your industry? They will tell me that they went to Harvard. To me, that is not 
a differentiator because a thousand other people went to Harvard in the same year and graduated. What makes you different? What are your key assets? How do you leverage your personal currency? What problems can your competencies solve? Can you connect your value to a business imperative or an organization imperative? How can that resonate with a potential employer or a potential client? And that's where I come in. Share with us a, a little bit, obviously without calling anybody name, of an experience that, that really resonated with you in terms of someone who went through this process and you saw a difference. I had a, a, a very important person, let me just say a very important person, who uh, unfortunately was very tunneled in the sense that they wanted to land a particular position. And I don't like going in like that because I think that you should come in with an open mind and you should see what you discover, what do you uncover, because there are some latent talents that we have You know, you may be qualified in economics, but you may be a a, a photographer or creative skills. So we allow the plane to land somewhere. So this person came in wanting a particular position, a high-level position, and we went through the process, what your core values are, because we tend to make our, our very important decisions based on our principles and our standards, what competencies, and we work together for hours. Uh, and days and weeks to how does this particular skill solve this particular problem? What is the three core areas that you'd want to work on in your industry? You can't solve every problem. Give me the top three. What skills could you draw on to solve this problem? What is the result? And he went in for this interview. Several, you know, these high-level positions require several yeah. um, uh, iterations. He got the job. He got the job, and this, and I had another client of similar ilk uh, out of a, a very powerful Fortune 100 company, and this person also got the promotion two years earlier than was intended. Well, and share so, share with my listeners a little bit in 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 um, thirty seconds or forty five seconds. Give them an example using me of the kind of thing you do. All right. Uh, you're in broadcasting. What is the biggest asset do you think you bring to the table in broadcasting? Um, my, 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 my knowledge base and curiosity and, and gift for asking questions. Your gift for asking questions. How, what is the formula? How do you think your questioning is different from somebody else? What makes you stand out? What uh, makes Jamaicans think you are the best? Background, background research and the deep thought are put into the questions themselves. So the framing of the question is really important because that helps you too. That, that, it's that that determines the answer that, that you elicit. What's the result you're seeking? An interesting, informative, engaging interview. Honest response? From who? Are you seeking an honest oh. response or just an interesting one? Honest as well. I would add honest, yes. Because that accounts for your, your own values because your, your ethics has a lot to do with how we engage. And you become a powerful broadcaster because you center your ethics, your top. So I, could, I mean, we could go into your personality and stuff and how that uh, helps you to become a very strong interviewer who is very well respected, but we don't have time for it today. We'll but have to. You'll have to sign up for my own your value online so course. So how, yeah. how do you take how do you take that information now and tell me and say we've gone through an hour, two hour, how many hours? How do you take that information and then help me move forward? What I will do is that 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 transition on the transitional skill, questioning and interrogation. Where else can you take it? Uh. Is it a degree in law? You are now an attorney. Can you add? Are you? Are we going to see in the courtroom? Are you going to advocate for changes in access to information? Can we see you in a different platform? I saw you in Rwanda doing something very, very interesting, and I think that would be an amazing global platform for you. Okay. I don't know if that is your space. We'd have to work together. Okay, to see if that is where the plane lands. Interesting. But 
I see you more than where you are. Not saying you're supposed to leave the job. Your boss is listening. <laughs> okay, my boss, my bosses are listening right now. So people, now make you right. make, now make you make me lose a little work. All right, all right. I'm yeah, near. But if you zoom out, zoom out of your life, then you can do much more. Greater things are in store for you. All right, thank you. So, so tell us now about your latest project. All right, so it's an online course uh, which is called Own Your Value because I believe that the end product, the end uh, result of personal branding should be really owning your value and being able to communicate that value effectively in order to land the opportunities that you want. So this, everybody can do it independently. Uh, You can sign up on the website. You can see it on my uh, social media and it, you have up to six weeks um, to do it in terms of having me with you. So it's not one of those courses where I leave you alone. We will have live coaching, uh, group coaching. You can interact with other students during the class, but you'll have access to it for at least a year. All right, I'll tell you what, you know, I'm going to ask you to hold on, talk to my producer. I'm going to beg you a few more minutes after sports because, I mean, I'm, I'm just fascinated by a lot of what you're saying. One of my listeners, Shireen in St. Thomas, says, I need Hume's help. She says, one day I'll get it. Many of us in academia have the issues that Hume highlighted. Let's go to sports. And if Hume can give us a few more minutes, we'll come back with her at seven. Thank you so much for staying with us. We continue with you on Beyond the Headlines. I'm Dion Jacks Miller. We're talking to Executive Leadership Coach and Professor of Communication, Dr. Hume Johnson, about her career, her journey, how she found the, the what should I say, her focal point in terms of her career. Remember our WhatsApp line, it's 5535908. And Gavin in Kingston says, that was such a great interview with Dr. Johnson. I got nervous after I heard all those qualifications and then she said, mistake. <laughs> she made a valuable point about finding that common thread. It's important to find a focus and zone in. And let me, in fact, pick up on that because, as I mentioned, you, you've chosen this whole arena of personal branding. And tell me why that attracted you. You know, I, I think because it rescued me. It didn't attract me so much that... It rescued me at a time when I needed a direction. When you have a qualification, the, the, the rules have changed because the, the economy has changed and the world of work has changed. So in the past, you didn't need a personal brand. You have a qualification, you graduate, you get a job, you stay in that job for 30 years, you retire, you have good benefits, and it worked out. The work has changed in such a dynamic way. We're now existing in in an information age and a knowledge economy. So people are now forced into this unusual, fiercely competitive business environment where they have to find effective ways to demonstrate their value. What many people have chosen to do is I'm going to go on social media, I'll try to get some following, I will try to make some money on YouTube, and I'll be an influencer because this is how I'm going to make money and how I'm going to stand out. That's not the space for everybody. I'm not saying it can't work. I've seen it work for many people. But it's not the space for everybody. What you have to figure out is what skill are you going to use Who needs this skill? What problem can you solve? And whom do you want to solve this problem for? And can you produce results? I discovered very early on, when I was branding Tony Rebel, you know, I didn't know anything about it. I was, Tony wanted to get him and his artist in the the newspaper. I could get you on the newspaper because I could write. I knew journalists. They were my friends. It wasn't hard. I could get you there. You want some pictures taken? You want a bio written? I'll do it. Great. I discovered later on that image building had a lot to do with who you are. So when you're writing an artist's bio, you have to find out who they are, why they're singing, what they're singing. So after a while, I discovered that I have to figure that out for myself. Here I am with the highest qualification, and I don't know what to do with it. 
People call me and they say, oh, should I do health service management or should I do counseling? And I say, but you have to figure out what your brand is. You can't just pick a qualification out of a hat and say, oh, I want to advance my career. Let me do an MBA. Let me do a PhD and it will take me there. And so we have to change the narrative. You have to figure out what your brand is and then see where it leads you. Then you do a qualification to bolster the skills that you have, to bolster whatever you need. If you don't need it, don't do it because it's too expensive anyway. So you think a lot of people go at it backwards? We, we, we have been conditioned to go about it that way. We have also been conditioned in a post-colonial education system to get a job. So what they're up at the university is teaching, including here in the United States, because I've spent the last 15 years teaching two years in Australia and 13 years at this university here in, in, in Rhode Island. And what we're doing is giving them this knowledge and this information that they could equally get online, but at, in our classes is more focused. So that's why you pay the big money to come, because it's more focused. <laughs> at the end of the four years, I say, what is your skill? You're graduating. So I now do a simulated job interview as part of my end. That's your final project. And I get some executives to come in and interview the students. Nice. And I say, what is your skill? And we coach them. What's your skill? And you tell me we spent four years teaching you and you can't tell me <laughs> what your skill is. Something is wrong with that method. Mm. Something is wrong with that system. And is that something so you trying... were finding, in fact, that people finished college and were saying, you know, they don't know what is their skill? Exactly. Wow. Because when, I, because, and when I'm teaching uh, physicians and executives and, and architects and doctors and, and lawyers in a room who are in their mid-career and I'm asking them the same questions and they're struggling, <laughs> it tells me that what we're doing at the higher education level or primary level, we're, we're going about it all wrong. We, I don't ask kids anymore what they want to be. I ask them what skill do they want to develop? Who do they want to help? So my nephew said to me, when I asked him one time, he said, I don't know. And I said, what skill do you want to develop? He first told me he wants to be a pilot. I said, what skill do you want to develop? <laughs> he said, a plane flying skill. <laughs> <laughs> After all. After all. So. Nice. That's fascinating. <sighs> well, well. At the, before I let you go, so how do you, if you had to define it in a, in a sentence, how would you define personal brand? I would say your personal brand is your unique set of competences, skills, personal attributes, your experience, your talents, your values. And then personal branding is a process by which you communicate that value because that's your personal currency. And you communicate that not to everybody, but to key stakeholders in the spaces where you believe you want to make the most impact. All right. So everybody can be a leader in their field, not acquire a position and be a leader, not have a credential and be a leader, not be the boss upstairs, RGR, and be a leader. But can you be the leader in sales? Can you be the leader in the broadcast industry? Can you be a leader in medicine or whatever? Mm -hmm. That's the kind of leadership we're talking about. And once you own what you're, once you can define those key assets that make up your personal brand, you can leverage this personal currency in the specific arena where you want to make an impact and you go and kill it right there going to have to leave it there. Fascinating talking to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hume Johnson, author of the book Brand You. And I think people can get it on Amazon if they're interested, right? Yes. All right. An yes. executive leadership coach and professor of communication. All the very best.